everything playing. It's not letting me go live on Facebook, so it's not letting me go live. <sighs> delete on Facebook. It's not letting me delete it.
Good evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you're tuning in from. It's Mike with Itty Bitty Micro Farms here for another Tuesday live session. Go ahead and uh, ask your question, comment below where you're from, where you're tuning in from, or any questions that you have for me at all. All right. Let's see, set up here. Did have some uh, technical issues with our Facebook. Uh, if anybody was over there and over here, welcome over to the YouTube or the Twitter. We're on both of them. Uh, for some reason, Facebook did not want to connect. So I do apologize for anybody who was over there, but we are here on YouTube and Twitter. You can check us out on either one of them as we get started here tonight. And if you're here, just say hi. If you uh, ain't got any questions or anything else, just say hi and uh, I'll welcome you into the stream. We've got a few things we can go over tonight, um, but really it is all directed by the watchers, the stream, you, of what questions you have, comments or anything like that. Uh, this is your time. So uh, if we don't have any questions or comments or anything coming through, I will uh, talk about a few things as well. But we'll wait a few minutes here, a few moments, let everybody come in to the stream. Hello, Paula. Welcome to the stream again. Nice to see you. Um, so, yeah. Um. One thing I was going to say tonight for the ones that are on here already is to make sure that you, uh, if you're going to do farmer markets, uh, the signups and all that start now. So make sure that you uh, sign up for your farmer's market, find your farmer's market that you want to go to and uh, get signed up. They do fill up fast. They've all contacted us that we went last year and put us in. So uh, make sure that you uh, are signing up for them right away as they do happen fast. Hey Joshua, welcome. Nice to see you in here again today. Paula, may I please ask what are your thoughts on blackout after germination? My thought is most of them do not need it. Uh, most plants do not need a blackout period. Uh, that's kind of what germination is for, for them three days, three to four days in germination, two days on some things. We do have a couple crops that do need blackout. Obviously popcorn, which is grown in complete darkness the whole time and no light at all. And then you have uh, arugula that we do a one-day blackout on. And most of the time, when we have shelf space, I don't use the blackout room that's behind me for arugula. If I have shelf space, I just put it on the same shelf with the lights. Just turn the lights off in that section. Uh, so they always go on the top shelf, no lights up there. And that helps them stretch as well. It creates less mold issues. But you can also put them in a blackout room or blackout dome. That works great. Get them a little bit more stretched because they otherwise will be very small. So arugula for sure. And then also leeks. Uh, we do a blackout period for leeks as well, which you can watch in our leek video as well. We have a leek video and an arugula video. Them are the only two that really need blackout, obviously, besides popcorn. Everything else does not need it. Sunflowers don't need a blackout period. Peas don't need a blackout period. Bro broccoli doesn't need a blackout period, so on and so on. Uh, them are the only two that I found out three with popcorn I have caveat always blackout but them are the the ones i've only found out that need blackout that i run across um beets are good no blackout cilantro a basil doesn't need a blackout so yeah that's what i uh that's my thought on it do you have any specific crops that you're asking about paula or is it just in general Joshua, how do you sell your 505 wheatgrass at the farmer's market? 
Do you hand it to them in a bag it up, keep it from getting dirty? Uh, yeah, we uh, we have bags that we bag up the 5x5 five five wheatgrass in. We always put them in that. Uh, the bags will fit too nicely if they bike too. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we put it in a bag for them so they can uh, carry it around because otherwise it will get quite dirty on anything else. So it goes in a separate bag uh, for them on the 5x5s. Five five we the, the bags are biodegradable, obviously, but but yeah, they go in bags separately for them, and they sell well. And you market as pack grass, you know. We just had a past market; we sold seven of them at. That isn't a very busy. It's a winter market. Uh, we do well at it, but it's not as busy as the big markets. So it's about half. But we did sell seven of the eight that we brought, so that was very good. Yep, no problem answer your question. Hopefully I got it. Yep, just in general. Okay, good. Yeah, I think people over blackout, over complicated on that with the blackout. I see him blacking out peas and sunflowers and stuff. So you now don't don't need it. Yeah, our wheatgrass sells quite well at the market when you market it as farmers market. We are now selling seven flats. Right, seven flats, eight flats. Of uh, so eight by eight, eight times eight, so sixty-four. Uh, five by fives uh, to grocery stores every week, uh, and more to come hopefully. But that's where currently we're doing. Uh, so yeah, uh, wheat grass is going well, and then obviously market season will sell a ton of them as well. It's the pet grass. Going to try and do a whole complete setup like for pet grass, a whole shelf separate, separate maybe a dog bowl for dogs to drink out of and stuff like that. To get it more attraction to it, so I'm pro probably sell even better. At the farmers market we just went to, we bought this plant from one of the other vendors. I seen, I just thought it looked good. Something for the desk. So yeah, always shop your vendors that are there with you at the farmers markets, R &E market, and support them as well. But yes, make sure you're signing up for your farmer's market as they fill up fast. Um, they uh, they fill up super fast. Um, some of them sell out and you can't even get into them. So uh, we've been fortunate. But we got into them last year, all the ones that we wanted to. And we'll be doing five. One might be a bi-weekly one, which I'm not happy about. But it is what it is. Um, I wish it was weekly. Just makes a good routine for people to come out. But maybe hopefully bi weekly they really buy really good when they come out. So So that is uh our plan for farmers markets. Uh and if you get in early enough with these farmers markets, usually they give you a discount too. Like the one's a fifty percent discount if we pay by the end of the month this month. So that's that's a big, big, big saving. So And uh, is anybody planning on going to farmers markets? And if so, you doing one or multiples, or what's your plan with your farmers market season? Paul, I see people using dome covers. What are they used for? Are they necessary? Just curious, I'm learning things. Yeah, no, no, that's why you're here to ask questions, Paula. Um, the domes are good for if you don't have a blackout room like we got that we made, uh, which I'm running out of space, so I need to use that uh, for germination. As you can see, our stuff's full back there, and I got more to plant tomorrow as everything starts ramping up for big markets that come early. Uh, so we will be getting domes as well. Uh, so the domes will go really good for popcorn because they're nice and big. They're a 5-inch, 6-inch. Five or six inch domes. I think it's six. Six inch domes from Bootstrap Farmer, which you can check out in our links below. Um, but yeah, um, they're used for that for blackout for the ones that need it. Uh, but again, a, like a arugula uh, and probably even a leak, you could probably just set on the shelf with no lights and just make sure it's top shelf and it would do just as well. Uh, but the clear dome ones. Uh, if you're seeing them, they are uh, for like seedlings. Like we've got our herbs when we start our herbs. We got our full full grown herbs like basil, mint, parsley, some other ones. Uh, off the top of my head, can't think of them all. But um, 
but we use them clear domes to just to create a humidity dome in there for them. But them are the clear ones. But the complete blackout dome coverage is uh, just for blackout stuff. And you might have seen both versions. Some people painted their domes and stuff like that. But, but not necessary on most crops. Um, I don't know if you guys seen this, that we, we had the pleasure of being on, uh, PBS's Illinois stories. Um, you can check them out. Um, we drop, I'll drop a link here for you, uh, from that. And they did a whole tour on us about us and how we started, did all that, you know, stuff and everything else. And it's like, a on YouTube, it's like 27 minutes, but I'm sure it was a 30-minute broadcast on their station that they did. And it gave us great media coverage, great publicity, and I already had some great contacts come out of that. So the PBS uh, Illinois Stories was uh, huge for us. And I know some of you guys that watch this live and our YouTube are in Illinois. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Uh, if you're not from Illinois, check it out anyway, and you can get a real good detail of uh, what we do. It shows the backyard, our chickens, the whole whole gamut, more than our farm tour did. So farm tour is similar with the microgreen ones, but, but yeah, you can check that Illinois stories out. Uh, that was a uh, fun and uh, really enjoyed doing that. Paula, uh, I used to manage a farmer's market. We gave a discount to those who signed up for the entire season, opposed to the odd market days. Um, yeah, you will find that in some, I think our big one, the downtown one, they do a discount for the whole season, right? Yeah, they do a discount for the whole season. Uh, they don't do any early payment, they just, uh, discount for the season. Uh, but the other one we do on Saturday as well, uh, they give a 50% disc discount for signing up early, so. Looking forward to seeing your PBS story, thank you Paula, appreciate that. Joshua, do you session plan your crop for planting a garden? Good thing you asked, Joshua. That leads me into something I was going to show you guys tonight. So we can go to this. You can see this. This is our backyard, our, our full garden uh, planting, succession planting here. Make this a little bit bigger for you. But this is, uh, we got everything planned out in uh you want to make sure that you get your stuff planned out now uh, so you, when your seeds are starting and planting in the ground. So we got uh, the lettuce here, obviously, uh, when to start it for seedling uh, to germinate in the soil blocks. And then um, when it plants into the ground and when it should be harvested. Um, you can get a second cut out of lettuce. It does grow less, obviously, on the second cut. But you can plant on that if you want to. We are not going to do that this year uh, just for ease and for getting full crops to be able to sell. We're going to do it one time. We're going to cut, the lead, cut it right out of the ground and uh, plant it back as soon as we amend the soil that same day and get it right back in the ground. Uh, so that's kind of our plan here. So we have uh, three beds at a time that we're rotating. So this will be the first three beds and then uh, start the second beds. We are going to get in the ground a little bit. A spinach and beets and radishes early in the season here as you can see just to get it started uh, and fill in that space when we don't have anything growing in them beds and then it goes all the way down uh, most of its lettuce 99% of its lettuce they have some beets and radishes and spinach in here as well and spinach down in these two beds for the entire season as well we might fit in some beet and radishes depending on the weather but uh, yes uh, succession planning big time and this is the way we do it, still use an Excel spreadsheet for it. And then I put these numbers into my seed leaf program, which we've built in. It's not really made for lettuce. for It's mainly made for microgreens, but we've manipulated it to the germination just like you would for anything else. It's just longer, obviously. But So that way it tells me when to plant them as well. So, um, so I build it on the spreadsheet, put it into the seed leaf program. Uh, so I don't miss planting anything. 
So any questions on that or anything else, I can go more in depth on it. But um, that is uh, definitely what we do. So it's session planning. And you can see that it's uh, coming out of the ground on the 6th. And then more is going right back in on the 5th, 5-8th. So definitely uh, huge. With all that lettuce, are you getting a greens harvester? Uh, we do it all by hand. The lettuce with the spinach is really good for a green harvester from what I've seen, but the lettuce is is more of cutting it off uh, and everything else uh, by hand. You're going to get more yield out of it. I'm not going to uh, get a green harvester for the lettuce. And for the little bit of spinach that we do and stuff, it doesn't make it worth it for us for the costs. Now, if I get more land and go bigger, uh, then yeah. So this good old manual hard labor there. All right, what else we got? Are you going to put them up for me? Right. John, welcome to the stream. Um, I will be doing at least two farmer's markets. I will be pushing microgreens for the first time at this market season. I sell veggies and other ones. Doing it for eight years. Awesome. Uh, uh, will be a great add-in product for you, uh, I believe. And if you already got a client base coming over, definitely uh, going to help build it. Uh, we started the opposite way. We started with microgreens and added in the lettuce, spinach, beets, radishes, all that stuff. So all over one year, <laughs> all over one season of the farmer's market. But uh, we definitely added that all in and got it going. Uh, we were late on the lettuce last year and stuff, just uh, getting everything going. But yeah, uh, so we'll have a bigger setup this year. Still in a little 10 by 20, but we'll fit it all in there. But yeah. Oh, thanks, Paula, for uh, that. Appreciate it. Yes, it's uh, it was it was weird how it started out. Somebody recommended us for a story in a local newspaper, and then uh, the local local newspaper got a hold of the guy, or I guess they talk or something on a regular basis, and got the PBS guy involved, and he heard about it and called us and wanted to come out and do a story on us. So it was a uh, it was very, very nice. Uh, really appreciative uh, of them coming out and doing that. And off that so far, we've had one big grocer uh, that we've been trying to get into and can't find a contact right. And I think he's a district manager or by regional regional manager uh, for them. So, uh, And he's going to talk to us at the ex expo that we're doing, uh, not this weekend, but the next weekend. So uh, hopefully that meeting goes well and he likes our products and everything else. So uh, And then we can uh, sign on with them and start growing. That would be a big, huge game changer for us. As we continue to grow and grow more. And obviously the media coverage helps out tremendously. And we did put out a new video yesterday. I know some of you have probably watched it um, on how to maximize your shelf life. I know Paula did. Thank you for uh, watching it and commenting, Paula. I appreciate the comments. They do help. Uh, every comment helps get that uh, out to new people. Uh, so I, I really appreciate it uh, when you guys do comment and like the videos. And obviously, if you're not subscribed, subscribing. But yeah, how to maximize your shelf life and go over that in detail. Uh, it is a quick video. It's only like two and a half minutes. Uh, but uh, I try to make the videos as long as they need to be. You know, that means they need to be two and a half minutes to get the information out. That's what we do. So you can check that one out. Um, uh, we do have more videos coming out as we go along. Some more in the pipeline. Yeah, Paula, that is uh, very exciting. Um, when he contacted uh, my wife on that, uh, sent a message out to her. Uh, it was very nice, uh, and it was day one of that story going out. And, uh, yeah, and we keep on getting comments from uh, friends and families and everybody that's watched it and just showing. We didn't even really tell anybody that was coming out. They just kind of uh, watched it, picked it up, and knew and seen it, so it was nice to see that. So, yeah.
John, what type of lettuce are you growing? I've been growing Salanova hydroponically and leaf lettuce in the ground. I grow, we grow Salanova in the ground. Uh, we started in soil blocks and let it germinate for three weeks, harden up for a week, and then into the ground. It's the basic setup of it. But yeah, um, yeah, Salanova has done great for us. It held up great in the heat. Um, and even into the cold, we had lettuce all the way almost to Christmas. Right, right after, right after Christmas, it was right after Christmas. Days all run together. Sorry, uh, it was right after Christmas. We still had it, obviously covered. Um, next year, we're gonna have bigger tunnels and better coverage to hopefully get it all year long for our home deliveries. We were delivering still probably ten, to 10 twelve bags of lettuce on uh, home deliveries. Up to that point, so, and kids still be doing that today, if we had it. Joshua, any new microgreen products you're looking to growing? Yes, we are looking at cress, bringing cilantro back when it's in stock. Uh, beets, we're probably gonna go to the red garnet, garnet, red giant. Came, uh, it's the one that uh, truly has available right now because the bull's blood. Uh, they don't have in, um, so I need to get the other beet in and uh, just start growing it. Then are the three up top of my head that we got. Probably bring back nasturtiums at some point. What else? Anything else, dear? Oh, and by the way, for everybody that wanted to see my wife and stuff and has asked that, the Illinois stories, she is the 90% of that. I have a very small role in it, so... That's probably why people are out contacting us because she's in it. So she sells it better. So just a quick side note because uh, I know uh, I think Paula asked to see see her. Uh, so you can see her in that. Um, but, yeah, them are uh, the top three. The Crest is uh, one that's been requested from us. So we're definitely going to look at that. Um, anything else that you got on the horizon? Borage, Borage maybe. Red cabbage. Red cabbage is going to be one for sure, um, just because of the health benefits of that. We want to get that one in uh, for ourselves, if uh, not in the cell. You know. Yep, them four are the top four that we're probably going to be adding on. All right. Robert, what do you think about selling live lettuce? Um so you're going to pack it, just pull it out of the ground? Hydroponically, hydroponically, that would work. For us, growing it on the ground, that wouldn't work. But hydroponically, that definitely would work. Just pull it out of the cells and, uh, and pack it in there. I know they sell grill in the grocery store like that. Uh, people really seem to like that. So, yeah, uh, you probably can get a premium out of it, uh, being you marketing it right that it's live. But uh, packaging, yeah, packaging is always what you got to look at. And in this whole business, this whole industry, packaging is totally what's going to be. We are going to sell some full heads of lettuce. So when we harvest the, what we want to harvest, what we think we're going to sell, uh, we'll probably just bring some full heads that are left in the bed uh, if we still have the stuff left in the bed to rotate out. So it won't be a lot. See how it sells at first. If it sells good at the market, uh, then we might continue selling it. But, yeah, we're planning on maybe selling some full heads of lettuce this year as well. Baddest, uh, what size lettuce bags do you sell? We sell the 8-ounce bags, uh, and we sell them for $5. Inflation, we might have to go to five fifty, but I don't want most 50 cents. I try to keep it simple at the market. We... We did five dollars all last year, and then we did. Uh, we're doing four dollars probably on the smaller varieties, and five dollars on the big ones. Uh, no change. I want to make change fast for people, and be able to move on to the next person. You don't want to be hung up by change, so we uh, we do everything by that. Paula, I'm happy for you. Happy to support you. You you give very. You, ugh, if I could talk, you give very. You are very giving and sharing your experience and knowledge. By the way. No problem, Paula. I love doing it. Um, my mission is to teach people how to do this business correctly and how to do microgreens correctly and grow them correctly, whether it's for themselves or if they're selling them. I think there's way too many misinformation out there. 
um, and people that are not growing commercially uh, don't know what they're doing uh, sometimes. And there's some good information out there too. Uh, Donnie Green's gives some good information out there. Uh, David doesn't do a lot for micro acres. He doesn't do a lot of videos or anything like that for it. But if you're looking for a mentor, David is definitely a good one as well. Um, Curtis Stone's got great information out there on the microgreens as well. And growing le growing gardens and stuff. I mean, worth of knowledge out there. Um, and if you want to get all that information on with Curtis and growing garden, growing microgreens, doing everything else, which David is on this program, which is from the field TV. Uh, so FTV, I'll drop a link for you here. Um, but uh, tons of information out there uh, on from the field um, that he has. And uh, there's a whole microgreen section, garden section, uh about anything you can think of in the garden and homesteading stuff. So definitely uh, check that out if you haven't checked out From the Field. That is an affiliate link, but you do get a free trial with that. Uh, so you can check it out. If you don't like it, cancel. Pay nothing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, do you grow any microgreen herbs? Uh, besides cilantro? No. This cilantro. Uh, we do all the full-size herbs besides that. Uh, which our basil is growing amazingly. Uh, we've had great germination. Um, out of one tray of the three by threes, we're probably going to quadruple that out of the ones that have germinated when we divide them out. So, yep. Um, but no, no, no other microbes besides cilantro. They all are too small to me and take too long to grow. So we don't do them. We, we tried. But. Ricky, welcome. And On The Grow got him started. Um, I watched On The Grow videos years ago uh, before we started growing commercially. And they are great for uh, getting people into business. Uh, they do get some good information. They're mainly a trial and error company. Uh, now is what they do. Uh, but they have not grown commercially in three years. So... Uh, just that's in my advocate about them. Uh, some of the things that they do, there's no way you could grow commercially or scale it up to a large scale. So, but they got good information on the channel, uh, for sure. And there is the link for the PBS Illinois stories. Uh, if you want to check that out. Yes, we are growing the basil indoors. Uh, same racks, same situation as the where the microgreens are growing in the 3 by 3s Yep. Um, I will be doing a video on our growth on basil. Um, probably will. It's going to be a longer to make video uh, just because of the length it takes them. Uh, but we will start uh, doing that video here shortly. So, yeah. Um, Love growing the herbs and selling them at the markets. They sell well. Yeah, we got the basil, mint, bee balm, lemon balm, lemongrass, and rosemary. And basil, if I didn't say basil. I think I said basil. But yeah, them are our herbs that we're growing uh, this year. A lot of that is for ourselves uh, that we're going to put in an outdoor garden when we uh, when it gets warmer. We got a whole herb garden set up, so we will be putting a lot of that out there, uh, and then clipping off of it as we go through the year to eat off of it. But what we grow commercially to sell at the markets, we it's all indoors, and then we take it to the market. All right. Great questions so far today, guys. Um, what else do we want to talk about today? And anybody that was watching over the Facebook, if I didn't hear earlier, I'm sorry about that if you came over, but I'm happy to have you on the YouTube or Twitter if you're there. Uh, the Facebook uh, 
wasn't working. Some technical difficulties with it. Uh, that may be why they're losing users. I don't know. But yeah. Market season's right around the corner. Uh, planting today and tom well, tomorrow, I mean. Tomorrow for the expo. That's coming up on the 5th. So all the planting will be done for that tomorrow. Uh, it's a busy, busy week for us here. Doing that, getting uh, everything planted tomorrow, harvest tomorrow for Thursday. Deliveries hopefully Thursday, depending on the weather. As the storms are rolling in again, seems like every week we get a Thursday snowstorm here now, <laughs> this month of February. And then, uh, so, and then Friday we're back to planting again. And then currently right now the weekends will be the slower times for us until the market season starts. And then next weekend, obviously, we'll be at the expo the whole time. Yeah, I can uh, talk about how we clean and sanitize our trays. We obviously have a three-compartment sink. If you've seen our farm video tour video, we have a three-compartment sink that we do. And uh, I spray them out weekly, scrub them down with this a scrub brush to get everything out of it. Uh, so it's a little handheld hold brush and scrub out because you know they're marugula seeds and some of the seeds like to stick to it so scrub that off um so that's what i do on a weekly basis and then once a month as i rotate the trays in and out uh we soap and water scrub them down thoroughly and then i rinse and then sanitize them and let them air dry after that as we always do air dry them let them air dry after that um so only once a month do i deep clean and sanitize the trays. Other than that, I just uh, clean them out really good, get everything out of them, and then go from there. We are going to be doing, I would say, at this point in time, 4.5 markets a week. Um, the one market is going to be a bi-weekly market that we know for sure that's going to happen on a Sunday. The other one is... Not sure if it's going to happen. It was a weekly last year, so we might have to flip to a different market for the Sunday one. And we'll see how it goes uh, the first couple times that we do it. And if we may not do that one. It, depending on how well it is, we hope it goes well. Uh, but, yeah, we do a Wednesday market in the morning. We do a Thursday market in the afternoon. Two Saturday markets. And then that Sunday market. No problem. Welcome everybody else that's coming to the stream. I see some more people are coming in. Welcome. Um, no, not currently. Um, if we do cut it and do the juicing thing, we're just going to package it up as a, uh, as that. We currently sell it just as the live tray. A um, couple reasons, just because you don't get a lot off the tray. Uh, two, it is better for you to cut the wheatgrass, juice it immediately, and eat and drink it immediately. That is the best health benefits of it. And then, so if we would cut it, juice it, freeze it, you're going to lock in all the nutrients from that. Um, but once you cut that, you just like anything, it starts deteriorating. How do you package it for sure or to keep it? So the best health benefits from my understanding and my belief is to cut it, juice it, drink it right away, right away, or to freeze it and then juice it at a later date and you lock all that stuff in. So I definitely would, uh, that's why we sell it live. And occasionally we do five by fives of broccoli, radishes, stuff like that, and sell to people. It was mainly for displays, but then people wanted to buy it when we did it last year a couple times. So, and if they want to buy it, we sell it. I don't turn money down. But yeah, it was cute having the little five by fives on the rack of uh, all the different microgreens, and people seen it. And then we just started bringing full trays. We started planning that out to be able to have full trays that look good. 
were on their harvest date on the day of the market, so they looked like perfect. And then and the people could see how we were doing it and everything else. And then, uh, and that's when we could start sampling. We started doing that. We could sample right off the trays. Also recommend that if you're going to sample at a market or anywhere, be able to cut the trays live and sample to people. That's the best way to do it. Welcome to the stream. And what size and pricing do you have with your grocery stores? Do you give retailers a break for more units they buy? Um, we give a standard 30, 30% roughly. Some are a little bit less, a little bit more, but roughly 30% discount to the stores, uh, to all the grocery stores. Uh, and we used to give a break on the bigger units they bought, but we currently uh, do not. And that's how we are keeping our same pricing structure with them with inflation going on and price of everything rising right now. So we just went away from the volume discount and had no problem with any of them guy, any of our grocers understand that. And thankful that we're not raising the price, uh, as most everybody is. Uh, and I want to get the healthiest food into people's hands at the best price. And that's the, the way we can do it. So we did give a discount at one point up to la this month. We were doing that. Actually, last couple of weeks, uh, we went to that. We were trying to find the best way out to not raise our prices. And that's what we found that the best way is not to raise our prices. This is not to give a volume discount. But when we did it, it was... Uh, Anything over 50, it was up to 50 was just the normal 30% discount. 51 to 100 was 35%. And over 100 was 40% discount. But yeah, just uh, packaging more expensive, labels more expensive. We're lucky we buy soil in bulk and seeds in bulk that we've already had. Uh, so we've kind of... Uh, preempted that some of that uh increase in price of stuff and uh being able to keep our prices down can you give a breakdown on the sampling process and do you need an illinois sampling license the sampling is going to, licensing is going to vary by your county health department they're going to be the ones in charge of that the number one thing you need is a, a hand washing station set up uh, so you need a five or whatever gallon bucket that is, five gallon bucket uh, that's made for hand washing. You can find it at the hardware stores. We picked ours up at Lowe's. It's made for that. The insulation's better. Um, we actually put hot water in it the night before, and then all through the market the next morning. So like at ten o'clock at night, I put hot water in it, and then the next morning it's warm, lukewarm the whole whole market. It's like works perfectly for that. So then you gotta have your towel set up. You gotta have a drain bucket, uh, your soap there, your your gloves, obviously when you're sampling. Uh, but yeah, uh, check with your local county health department and your farmers market. Some of them, your county health department might allow you, but your local farmers market might not allow you. Uh, so yeah, you gotta have your sampling license with them. I don't. I think it costs like ten dollars for us last year, so it wasn't wasn't anything. It was well worth it. But yeah, uh, unfortunately, with different counties and the way they do it, you, you know, I can't answer that question fully. But uh, it's not an Illinois thing; it's a county health department thing. So check with them. Uh, I don't think I have a picture of our setup of that. I'll see if my producer can find one. It is real helpful to have somebody running the live with me, um, sitting next to me, and be able to look stuff up for me and uh, put links and all that stuff up and everything else. I just get to ramble and talk. So, very, very helpful. She's helpful in almost everything. Not almost, everything. Um, we wouldn't be anywhere without her in this business, so. Joshua, do you, oh, by the way, uh, everybody say happy birthday to her. Her birthday was Sunday. So you can say happy birthday to her. She loves that. 
do the stores buy from you on a weekly basis or bi-weekly? We do weekly deliveries to them. Uh, when we go in, we tell them we do a weekly delivery. Um, most of them love that. That's why you're getting the freshest product in there. I know other growers have done bi-weekly, uh, and then they got to leave products in the back and everything else. We rotate the products for them on a weekly basis, stock their shelves, rotate the products, make sure everything looks good. Like we did today was the deliveries to grocery stores. Some of the grocery stores uh, was today, and we go in and we rotate the product, put it up there, talk to them and say, uh, can we please get uh, more space? And then uh, the guy gave us four more spots today at the one store. Another store, we just kind of taken over the other four spots. that They used to have a microgreen growers there. They never put anything there, so we just keep putting our product there, and uh, they keep letting us do it. So I, I just keep doing it, and eventually they're just going to – Make sure we stay there. So, uh, but yeah, that, that's a side note on that. But we uh, we do weekly deliveries and we rotate all the products for them, uh, so that way we can make sure that the best products on the shelf all the time. Thank you, Joshua. She says thank you. Uh, what happens to leftover products? Do the stores eat the cost or do they ask you to split it loss? No, I do not split costs with them on lost products. Um, that's why we rotate the shelves. Um, we have very, very small shrinkage, as they call it in the groceries industry, is when they lose products, it's bad, and they got to throw it away. So we do not do that with them. It is 100% what we bring them, they buy. Um, we set up the parameters beforehand with them, Build a par for them, and that's what we bring them on a weekly basis. And adjust as you go along. When you're first in a grocery store, you know you're not going to know what they need. Uh, we go in. We used to go in every Sunday, count all the stores, what they have, know what we need to harvest on Monday, and then that's what we put in the stores. But we don't. We don't split any loss. The loss is on their end. It's produce. They're very, very familiar with losing the product. When you go in and talk to a produce manager, they're going to try to get you to do a commission. They're going to ask for that. And then you explain to them, no, I cannot do that. Uh, this product, I'm going to be here weekly, make sure it's good for you as best we can. Can't guarantee anything. You know how it is with produce. You're going to have some bad products here and there. And they're very used to losing products with produce. So uh, don't let them get you on a commission or a loss 50-50 or anything like that. Uh, we've had no problem with that whatsoever. Uh going in the grocery store, but they're going to ask 100%. They're going to ask. They're going to try to get the best deal for themselves, obviously. But So, yeah. I assume you provide potential stores with fresh sheets with your price and varieties. Do you list your parameters on the fresh sheet too? For the most part, we lift our, list all our parameters. Uh, but, yeah, we have a fresh sheet for them and what the situation is with buying, what the price is, if there was a discount for bulk on there, we have that. Um, so all that stuff's on there, um, and then you put a disclaimer at the bottom of, you know, all products are bought or, you know, blah, 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 don't do commission or whatever you want to put down at the bottom. Uh, not a lawyer. It's not a lawyer, uh, legal advice or anything else, but uh, definitely add a disclaimer down at the bottom that they can read. So, uh, so yeah, we have fresh sheets for our grocers. We have fresh sheets for our uh, restaurants, uh, two separate different fresh sheets. And technically we take a fresh sheet, uh, to the market too, of what we're selling. Uh, and then all that has all the information on the back as well, uh, that we do. So Paula, I spoil her as much as she lets me, which is not very often. She don't let me do much for her. Uh, but I do as much as I can for sure. But yeah, fresh sheets are very, very helpful. Uh, I highly recommend fresh sheets if you're going into a grocery store. Uh, you got to have them for them, and your in your restaurants as well. And then take something to the market. People can take with them uh, a flyer, information about your stuff, all that. I definitely uh, do that. Uh, as many microgreens as we're starting to grow and doing and everything else, we're going to have to have a booklet here soon instead of a one sheeter. Uh, all the products on one sheet, all the 
buying parameters on another sheet. <laughs> As it keeps growing and growing. And unfortunately, I do not. We cannot find a picture of the hand washing sink set up. Uh, but next, not next weekend, not this weekend, but the following weekend, uh, we got to have one for uh, the expo that we're doing. So I will make sure we take pictures of that specifically. But we'll also have pictures of the whole market. Probably going to do a video at the market um, and show you guys how we sell at the farmer's market and all that and everything else. So going to get that set up as well. I gotta figure out all the cameras set up what I need. Most of our stuff is all in uh, filmed on our phones that we do still. So, and we need one phone for uh, taking credit cards. So, we'll figure that out. I want to show you guys our setup that we're gonna have. It's gonna be a pretty intensive setup. So, be on the lookout for that. So has anybody um, jumped on and got with Seedleaf program yet? Or are you still using spreadsheets to keep track of stuff? Are you using pen and paper? Uh, what's everybody that is uh, selling? What are you doing? How are you keeping track of all your stuff? Uh, I love our seed leaf program. Um, I don't know how I did it in spreadsheets for so long. Um, when somebody orders, we just put that baby right in there and it tells me when to grow it and when to harvest it and everything else. Uh, and, uh, the exports that they have for the Excel and everything else is awesome to keep track and look at your cells and everything else. It's getting more and more intent or more involved and better, uh, stuff on there as, as, as we go, but. We were just talking about that today as we were making deliveries and how it's so much better than having to do the Excel because somebody orders. As we were driving down the road, somebody placed an order and we were able to put that into the seed leaf while we were going down the road. And it's there. Uh, it's very, very nice. City Greens, thinking about it. For now, spreadsheets from Curtis, of course. Yeah. Um, we base some of that off of that, but we actually, if you look through that program, when Donnie uh, is explaining how he does his spreadsheets, I watched that section about 40 times probably, and uh, kind of built it based off of his and stole as much ideals as I could off of his since he didn't fully show it and explain it. Uh, but I'm pretty good at watching stuff and stealing information out of bits and pieces as I watch stuff back and back and back. Uh, so it was loosely based off of that, them sheets were. But yeah, Curtis has got good sheets. Uh, great to start out with, for sure. Paul, looking forward to seeing how the Expo goes through your lens. Thank you. Wish you a lot of exposure from the Expo and additional account growth. Yes, uh, that is the goal with the, with that, for sure. And sales, obviously. We, we are planning on having a really good weekend that weekend, uh, hopefully, because we're planting a lot for it, so... I just, I just wanted to show you guys this. This is my be right back if I ever have to leave for any reason. Screen. I hope you all like it. So that was just me showing off uh, the fancy artwork that we did. I actually built most of that one first time of doing that. But uh, yeah, definitely... Uh, it was my first one, so I wanted to show that off of uh, me building something out there. She mainly does that, but really enjoyed doing that. Joshua, I've been looking to get into Seed Leaf, currently using paper notes. Yeah. That's where we all start. We all start with something. Um, but yeah, I, I don't make any money by you guys going and getting Seed Leaf. I don't have an affiliate or anything like that, but... Uh, I just like to promote stuff that actually works and is good. So, 
definitely uh, worth a look into it. What do we do? do? So nobody's tried seed leaf yet. Love the last one. Was that the Be Right Back video? Or the last one with the... I like the one with the cat. That's my favorite. Huh? The bangles. Yeah, we, we have bangles. That's a bangle cat. That's not our cat, but it kind of looks like one of them. Um, but yeah, we do have bang two bangle cats, so they're a lot of fun. Very needy. Very lovey. Cuddly, put you to sleep, curl up with you. What other questions? Any questions you guys got about anything and everything? Ask away. It doesn't have to pertain to microgreens at all. And I uh, thank everybody for their support, obviously. Uh, we are at... Last check, we were at 444 subscribers. Uh, so I do appreciate that. As we are on our goal to get to 500, the goal was by the end of February, but I don't think we're going to make that uh, as we need 56 more subscribers. Um, outside chance of it, but uh, still, uh, still looking at it. Possibly. John is still using pen and paper. I'm ordered. I don't take time to develop spreadsheets. Any good spreadsheet templates? I am going to be sharing, sharing, selling. I haven't decided yet on my spreadsheets that I used to start uh, for you guys. Uh, they won't be very expensive, but it does take some time to make them. So, and uh, to give instructions and write instructions out. I'd already have them out, but I'm writing the instructions because I built them. I knew how to do them. So writing instructions out for somebody to uh, to do them uh, is what we're gonna what we're doing right now. So eventually I'll have them available um, and will be available for you guys. But also trying to figure out if I can do consulting or not. It's just I really want to do consulting and go deep dive into you guys' business and help you guys grow better and faster. Uh, but as you can tell, we're going to be doing four and a half to five markets during that time. We still have two delivery dates of Thursday, Tuesday and Thursdays. Thursday is a delivery date along with a market. Uh, all the harvest dates are in there. So I don't know. I don't want to put too much on and go. So so we'll just be uh, for sure doing these lives every Tuesday at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. And you guys can ask all the questions. Uh, can, but I can't dive in too deep, obviously, if you're looking to grow, but we can dive in as much as we can. But yeah, um, I'll have that eventually here soon before the markets. I'll have something for the spreadsheets for you. And if anybody knows anybody that gets value out of these videos, these lives, make sure you share our channel with them and uh, help us grow. We appreciate it. Um, we will have gardening videos coming out as we go through that process this year. Um, chickens. Uh, thanks, Robert, for asking. We currently have 35, but we are moving one of them to my sister-in-law's. She's going to be taking him. He turned out to be a rooster. And uh, we are not looking to breed or anything like that. We can have roosters here. That's not a problem. Uh, but we uh, just don't want it. Want roosters and deal with that. So we will have 34, hopefully sometime this week. She will be coming to get him. Uh, but, yeah, we have 34 chickens. And we're getting right now as half of the flock is new. We just got them in the fall. Uh, but we're getting 25-ish eggs on average a day right now. Um, we eat probably two dozens ourselves of them, and we're selling six dozen right now. 
Obviously, we have more, so we'll be taking them to markets. We're about averaging about nine, nine extra dozen, eight, seven to nine extra dozen a week. So we take them to markets and uh, sell them as well. And they sell fast. If they know you have eggs, they, they fly. How many kids do we have? We have four kids. They are 20, almost 19, 17, and we'll be turning 16 Friday. That That's our baby. That's our youngest, 16 on, on Friday. Yeah. I don't know if that means we're old or, or what. They have a way to age you. Anyway, me. She's still young. I'm old. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot. She did remind me. That's currently what we have in chickens. We are getting 40, maybe 50. Somewhere in that range. Uh, we haven't decided yet. We have to go in and order them. But uh, we're getting uh, 40 to 50 meat birds that we're going to uh, be raising and then uh, processing them. Mainly for us, but uh, depending on what we got, we might sell some at the market as well. We're just going to process them as whole birds and sell them, but uh, we definitely, definitely going to uh, uh, be raising meat birds. So, And I will do videos on that and how we're raising them. Do the chickens help with our business? I'm assuming that's what you mean. Uh, they help tremendously. One, they take care of the composting for us. Uh Oh, the kids? The chickens help more than the kids. <laughs> uh, because the chickens take care of our composting and all that stuff. But uh, the one does, um, our Otis does somewhat when we need him. Uh, he helps go to the markets. Because uh, one market definitely takes two people to run. So he helps her with that one. And then uh, I go solo on the other one on Saturday. Uh, and he helps out from time to time when we need it. And as we grow more and more, uh, and we're pretty close to that point, uh, he will be taking on more responsibility. He actually, we actually had him because he wanted to buy in a small portion of the business. Uh, so he actually has ownership in the business. And now our 18, almost 19 year old is talking about helping with the business. So when we get to that point, we might talk more seriously about him. But um, and my daughter, who's the third one, did help out a lot on uh, building stuff out. Actually, more than the boys didn't help out at all. We got one girl, three boys, for clarification there. Uh, she helped paint, helped build out the garage with us and stuff like that, but it mainly was because her boyfriend was helping me. But, uh, but yeah, I would say the chickens are more productive than the kids on the business side. Uh, curious what size lot are you guys on? It is a 9,000 square feet lot, and you can do a lot with that. So 34 laying hen chickens, 40 to 50 meat birds on the other side, garden in the backyard in between, garden out front, garden on the side. Uh, we are in a corner lot, so we have that advantage as well. So, yeah. It's great your kids show interest. Yeah, for the most part, they're, they're intrigued. They help out with the chickens somewhat because they like to go out and play with the chickens and pet them. Uh, so we make them make sure they got water and stuff. We do have an automatic water line on the chickens, but it freezes a lot right now, so we have to take bucket of water out for them and everything. City Greens, I'm in, I am in talks to, to have chicken farmers pick up soil seed waste. Awesome. Do chickens like all the waste, or does anything seem like dislike? Uh, they don't like peas as much. For sure. Uh, everything else they like, and they really, really love sunflowers. That is by far their favorite. And the popcorn waste. Uh, I think it's more the seed stuff that they like, but they love the sunflower greens. But they eat everything. Uh, they get in the compost and tear it up. But the peas they kind of avoid for the most part. It's probably just the way it grows. It's too thick of a mat, and uh, they just can't tear into it as well. So uh, right now we use the peas as kind of a fill them back in from all the mud and everything. Uh, so we lay them on the, the ground for them so they have some space to go that's green and not all muddy. It turns into mud in a week or so, but 
But yeah. Um, love having chickens. Um, she broke me down after many, many years of wanting chickens. Uh, chickens are where all this started, I think. We got chickens first. We were already growing microgreens for ourselves. What to do with the microgreens waste. And then farming and all that stuff just kind of ram into it uh, and just kind of kept growing from there. So chickens are the starter, I think. Chicken, chicken math and microgreen math. You just keep growing more microgreens and keep getting more chickens. And dogs love sunflowers. That's awesome. Do you just uh, feed them straight the sunflowers, or do they? I'm assuming you don't give them the mats to tear up anything. But uh, our cats eat the wheat grass. We give them the wheat grass. But uh, yeah, other than that, the chickens really, uh, really are big helps. The wheatgrass is just good for the for the cats, so we make sure they get that. Great for the nutrition. Uh, they don't they're not really outside cats, so got to give them something. The one sneaks out outside in the backyard all the time, but he's the big boy. He's the chicken. He loves the chickens. He goes and sets and watches the chick. Wa just watches the chickens. He used to get in their coop and lay with them. Uh, when we were, they were just roaming the backyard, he would be able to get in the coop and he just lay in there with them. And they lay together. It was it, it's nice, very very good together. All right, great conversation today, guys. Anything else? Uh, I'm willing to stay if you guys got any other questions or anything. Uh, really enjoyed uh, tonight's conversation and having everybody join the stream. Again, we do these every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. New videos out every week, if not two videos out every week about microgreens or gardening or chickens to come, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, um, more on the business inside coming out as we get everything filmed and put out. So, yeah. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> I forget I can turn away from the mic now. It won't pick me up. All right. Again, uh, thank everybody for joining the stream today. Really enjoyed all the conversation we had. Uh, unless there's any other things. Uh, Ricky, I chew up I chew up pea microgreens and mix it in my cat's food. That's probably very nutritious for them. I'm sure they enjoy that. Enjoy that a lot. It's awesome. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for the night. I appreciate everybody joining the stream. Thank you for joining. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And uh, like this video. Make sure people can watch it on the replay. And uh, if you make sure you check out all our videos that we're posting. Uh, we just posted the one on Shelf Life on the microgreens, the newest one. Got another video coming out on Thursday and at least one every week. I appreciate watching and we will see you on the next one. <laughs>